Hey guys, welcome back to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we're going to be watching the 2022 Iranian noir psychological thriller film, Subtraction. This is a film by director Manny Hajiji and stars Tarane Aladusti and Navid Mohammad Zadeh. The film is about a family living in Tehran who, over the course of an unnaturally long rainstorm, encounter somebody that they shouldn't. So I'm excited to watch it. And before we get started, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. I kind of like the idea of this roving camera, of the um, the kind of displaced idea of a central protagonist. We're not sure who we're meant to identify as a central character. And I think that plays into kind of a class issue that's being displayed as well with all of these newish looking cars in traffic with um, like women knocking on the doors, offering them flowers and stuff. Kind of disparity between the, peop the haves and the have nots on this rainy day. We still haven't locked in on uh, a focus character yet. Oh, we go backwards even. Pay attention and nothing will happen. This is something we should focus on. Um, as a central theme of it, of the movie, especially since the movie's going with this whole Michael Haneke cachet idea of not being able to focus on who the proper uh, subject is. So her daughter is constantly distracted. She's on her phone. She's in traffic. She has sunglasses. But uh, the woman notices something odd. But it's actually her. Um, her visual acuity that has led into trouble, that's identified trouble. How long has she been on this bus? I love these shots because they could just like shoot it in a lot or in a studio and kind of imitate the effects of going, of shooting outside. But it gives this nice kind of like filtery-ishness, this, uh, uh, this kind of like haunting or unreal feeling quality to this shot. Oh, we don't get this kind of title sequence anymore. Crying. Okay, we're going to do a separation, uh, kind of a, a running theme in some of the Iranian films or the Iranian films that have gone international is um, both uh, gender demarcation, like um, skewing the lines between per perception between men and women, and also um, a... a uh, a question of subjectivity in general. I mean, this has been a part of Iranian cinema and like the uh, docudramas and stuff that they make. But um, the the idea of subjectivity that uh, there is no objective truth that perception informs reality and characters carry their own biases and that taints the truth. <laughs> Hallucinations. Interesting. And you saw a fancy version of him. Doppelgangers. Love it. We're going to get a, an enemy. Well, you're going to have to keep this one. 
It's gonna be a doppelganger. It's not like an island situation, is it? Uh, never let me go situation? Uh, like a, a migrant uh, hotel filled with doppelgangers? Clones? That'd be silly. Whatever you do, do not listen to this recording. Jalal's in there, because he saw Jalal inside of the hotel. Or the apartment complex. Why are they keeping this a secret from, from the wife, though? It's a very, very small, like, uh, uh, mystery wrapped inside of the larger mystery. Uh, the larger mystery is, of course, what is going to be, like, I'm assuming doppelgangers or doubles, but there's a smaller mystery wrapped inside of it that I think is more thematically or emo psychologically resonant. The idea that they have to withhold this information from our, our the main character, that she is somehow ill-equipped maybe because of her condition her pregnancy her previous medication her anxiety uh to deal with this information and so while there is an overarching uh mystery of the strangers the doubles there is the um softer mystery of the distrust and perhaps distrusted in an infantilizing way as well I wonder if we'll see a repeated motif of stairs as well. This is a normal rain. Evocative line. Very, very, like, thriller mystery-ish. So are these, uh, developments? I wonder. This is, like, signaling to, like, um, a part of, like, commercial development or like high-rise developments in Tehran like an encroaching upper class or whatever that was her I love how dark this this uh, stairwell is it's, um, you know, motivated by not seeing uh, the characters until the revelation, but it's so eerie. Beta? Is this a religious thing? And like a reflection of their own apartment building, both of their housing is in similar states of disrepair. Oh, I love that she's presenting it to him. It's like identifying uh, a suspect or a cadaver, a body, but instead it's a double. Don't swap. Don't swap. It's not interesting. We don't need another enemy. I'm, I'm a bit nervous. I don't really like the swapping narrative. I don't think it's very evocative because uh, it ends up playing on the same tropes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's a really interesting performance so far by Tarana Elidusti. Um, she really manages in very, very slight transformations to convey a completely different character, perhaps with inhabiting the same body, perhaps inhabiting similar mannerisms, but just off enough that her disp- disposition seems very, very different. Like, this one seems more open, more rounded, and more, uh, like, emotionally available. The other one is reserved, compact, um, hidden, mysterious, like an arachnid. I do wonder why they're they're all intent on keeping this secret from Farzana. This is this is like contributing to her psychological uh, collapse. I love the appearance of that hand. It's so it's so dangerous. It's so it's so slight. completely different performance is vivid it's so small but it's completely different how does she do it yeah let's go let's go let's let's go let's go let's go let's get out of here best not to interfere as long as you can see everything then nothing will happen It's it's wonderfully dangerous. The, her her performance as uh, as Beta just has this this air of menace to it. I, I'm sure that's the intention of the um, actor and of the director of the screenwriter to portray this hint of menace to a character that may or not may not possess it. But um, building a sense of of dread or concern in the audience, yeah. a fear that one character will try and integrate the other. <laughs> And uh, the actor even sounds different as uh, as this character, as Momsen. It's wonderful to watch them play like completely different dynamics as the same couple. I wonder if they're going to shoot Farzadeh predominantly from, like, the um, the right-hand side and Bita from the left-hand side. I mean, her son is right. Bita is hot. What the hell? I don't really understand the difference. I guess this is the world of makeup. Um, other people would know better than I, but Bita looks completely different from Farzadeh. Yeah, see, they're shooting Bita from the from the left hand side. Yeah, definitely getting more of a uh, economic disparity story going on as well. And it's actually interesting that um, while um, Farzadeh probably has her own issues within the marriage structure or within the structure generally of their like comparative poverty, Bita in the higher echelons has to play a more feminine and subservient role. ببخشید من یه هوی تماس گرفتم من خودم رفتم خونه فکر میکرم همه اینا رو خواب دیدم اومدم دوباره ببینم اتو ببخشید نه خیلی کار خوبی کردین اومدین راستش من خودم هم داشتم فکر میکردم it is a weird sensation I'm glad they like playing it out a little bit more than actually talking about the complication they're not t- actually talking about it but then like revealing through their dialogue the kind of tension of simultaneously knowing somebody them having all the features of somebody that you're familiar with but the actual s- speaking process is new and unfamiliar I-, I can see how this would be like arousing or captivating to them and what is drawing them towards each other <laughs> I 
باشر They're exchanging a ring. That's dirty. Don't add that kind of subtlety into the movie. Oh, well, they just made it too obvious. <laughs> yeah, so um, Jalal hasn't heard Farzadeh laugh in a long time because she has like work troubles or like life trouble, life troubles. And uh, similarly, Bita hasn't had like a strong connection with um, with Mosin because Mosin has like work troubles and he's like emotionally intractable. They they're actually um, seeing in each other uh, the dynamic that they play out with their partners that both uh, Bita and uh, Jalal have to remain like pliable and subservient to their partners or to their partners' greater issues. And so, oh, uh, I think I don't know. We'll see what the scene, tur- how the scene develops, how his professional life develops. Right? I, I think um, it's illustrating a little bit that even within the framework of the high rise that Mosin and um, Bita occupy, their um, like gilded life in comparison to Farzadeh and Jalal, uh, they're actually kind of like trapped in it to a certain degree. The the high rise is actually much more constrictive and constraining than Farzadeh and Jalal's. But uh, this like professional setting is kind of showing the little space that that um, that Mosin has to maneuver. Right, left, right, left. This is a really strange aspect. I, 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 I do like that they're delaying the swap as much as possible. I really hope they don't do the swap. But in being able to observe each other in like a sliding doors kind of context, uh, they can actually see that they're much, much, much more alike than they are um, like different from each other or alienated from each other. But those slight differences also cause a degree of alienation. <laughs> باید بری ببینیش خیلی وزاش خرابه باید بری وزاش خواهی کنی نمیرم ببینمش میخوای چیکار کنی چی؟ هیچی چی؟ هیچی بابا نمیرم ببینمش میخوای چیکار کنی چی؟ she doesn't view him as receptive. Whether or not he'd be receptive to the truth, to the doppelgangers, is one or is one thing or another. But he isn't receptive to the things that she tells him. He, he doesn't trust her, so she doesn't trust him. And the the effect of of what the doppelganger revelation will have on him is kind of irrelevant in this instance. <laughs> Oh no, she's going to try and enlist uh, Jalal to apologize on his behalf, and that's what's going to get Jalal hurt. Yeah. That's oh, he's offering himself to apologize. We have a solution. You know, you wouldn't do this if you just didn't happen to have a crush on the woman who looks exactly like your wife. Mom, yeah. This is I, I understand why this plot ha- this plot point has to happen in the movie, but um this doesn't make sense. Uh if he apologizes on Mosin's behalf, Mosin will have to deal with the fallout of that, and that'll come back to them eventually. I mean, it won't hurt him if if um if Bita reveals the doppelganger thing, but um you know. The the story isn't about doppelgangers. The story is about trust. Okay, no, 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 no. 
تو اون استادیوم همش چی بگم تو هم بگو بابام تو جاده شما من رو میشین رو پاش رانندگی میکنم دروغ بگم نه بعدا میبرم درست میشه من میخوام برم استادیوم استادیوم جای بچه ها نیست از اینه که تالی کسی نمونده اتفاق یه بار میفته هر چون یه چیزی میگیم درست صحبت کن I'm getting kind of interested in these car shots as well, just like the parallelism. I mean, it's a, it's a simple structure for displaying like family dynamics, but the parallel structure between uh, the driving school car and whatever fancy fucking car this is. And like who controls the car, who operates the car, uh, far as a day, despite being in the passenger seat, is in control of the brakes being an instructor. Oh shit! I I I I argue that this might be a bit too contrived, but that is the language of cinema and storytelling. This is what it, this is what movies are supposed to be. You're supposed to up the stakes. Completely different dynamic. Completely different dynamic. This is gonna fuck up this kid. Because while Mosin is not exactly not a man of his word, Mosin is a man of order. Uh, he cannot barter. He cannot make promises. He gives orders. That's exactly what Bardia, his son, says to him, that he always has an answer. Uh, what a weird thing for a kid to be able to identify at like seven or eight, but uh, his father makes it clear. Oh yeah, and uh, also his father just told him to lie. And he asked him directly about it if uh, he was asking him to lie. And he said, you know, it's not a lie if it's going to happen eventually. I love how populated this hospital is. Uh, they keep getting interrupted at the bathroom door, and now she keeps on getting blocked in her path to Mosin. Um, usually in these kind of like traversal scenes, you would just let your principal character actor like kind of dominate the space. Everybody kind of opens like the, 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 the Red Sea for them. But um, in this case, she's constantly being blocked. Is that not over there? I love these like little insert shots where it's just like unmooring, just like e escalating the tension, just like in oblique ways, just in the shot composition, making you increasingly nervous. I love seeing dark red blood in films. I don't know if it's entirely accurate, but it's always the evocative way to go. I mean, bright red too sometimes. Suspiria. It's lipstick. Oh, she in love. Don't look. This two family shit is so complicated. I don't understand how men used to do this in the 60s. It's such a lonely portrait of uh, Jalal. The one who works the hardest on everybody's behalf is the only one with the motorbike. He's a man alone on his own island, the most financially strapped, the most precarious, and he 
does his best for everybody. It's uh it's a noble character, but it's tragic. To him. And this is a similar argument again with the parallel structure that um that Jalal had with Farzadeh upon first learning that there were doppelgangers he asked Farzadeh for the keys and she said she had a class and similarly Farzadeh followed uh, Jalal <gasps> Mosin, you idiot! You fucking idiot! Mosin! Mosin! I like really empathize with him. He's this like dark, intractable, hate filled character. Um, but he like can't. He can't, like, figure out anything. He can't express anything except through the lens of this, like, of his anger. And it, and it isolates him. But he is handling this all wrong. He can't open up to his wife. He can't open up to his son. He's, like, successful enough, but not successful. Uh, he's, like, at a, like, landlocked in his job. He's landlocked in his higher eyes. Like, he can't... He can't be in the world anymore. But this is not the way to handle it. That's such a beautiful image. Oh my god. It's so fucking. Oh my god. This one man who's like a total stranger to all of them, who has no connection with any of them. He is so alone and he's put himself there, but it's just the desperation of his character. They've, I, I think um, Mosin is a really compelling, like, bad guy or like um, unsympathetic character within this framework. Um because as as cold as his characterization is, you you actually get a lot of the character um, through like the relief, the negative of that coldness. You actually see a lot of where his character is coming from. <laughs> I love that they don't swap in the conventional way of this movie that just encountering the double like that contrast that relief uh highlights their own characters more intensely and I love that they play out the same dynamics with each other in opposite ways <laughs> She really is going through this pregnancy alone. I don't really understand why, but she is. This is all a dream. Maybe her seeing it has caused the issue, in direct contrast to what she said in the beginning of the movie. Maybe that's where her, why she's alone in this pregnancy. Uh, she doesn't feel like she can provide for her kid. I think that might be something that's reflected in the um, the doppelganger narrative that she's seeing uh, what she views as a successful um, version of her life, a successful version of her marriage and um like financially suc successful, but they also have a kid that they're raising. And in addition to that dynamic, when Jalal meets her doppelganger, uh, she is interpreting, uh, maybe subconsciously, maybe consciously, that they've fallen in love with each other, um, that this is a better version of her. Um, 
that she can't reach and um in the absence of that she doesn't know how to take care of her family how to take care of her unborn child with this better version of her in existence um a better version that is perhaps um spurned on by uh free will that perhaps there was an active decision that the version of her that is beta has made that has made her a better person or perhaps by dint of some innate human expression that there's something wrong inside of her that won't allow her to um, have the success or have this uh, nurturing, caring character that that Beta has. Don't take the pill. Don't take. Don't take the pill. Don't take the pill. Yeah, and this is like, uh, you know, it's um, kind of like the exhaustion of the pregnancy and a desire to see the truth. But you can also interpret this as a, uh, a desire to terminate the pregnancy, that she doesn't want the responsibility of this child anymore in in um, in a world where she could possibly see herself as, uh, as already um, an unfit mother for it. <laughs> they used a different color filter or something for the uh, apartment now. It's actually a different color. Like, we've exited from the dream, even though it's foggy now. It's like a... It's, it's filmed with this soft focus, like a... Um, like, sh like she's in a drug state. Curiouser and curiouser. Oh no, oh no, don't do this to me. Hey, boy. Subtractions. The doppelganger has been subtracted. No, they had to move because of, a, a, because of a, his job. <laughs> Because she's, he's in love with my wife. I love that he's in silhouette in this. That um, uh, somehow, even if he's the same, if he, she recognizes him, maybe he's different. Maybe the drugs have taken a different effect. Damn. Damn. Completely smote him. Mosin's absolutely been destroyed by Jalal's chivalry. Jalal. Khun miyad. این چه کارایی بود من کردم؟ کار بایدی نبود خوب بود اوی 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 There's absolutely no need for her to kill her clone من دیگه نمیکشم باید تموم شه این بس it's really intense that uh oh no i don't really know how to describe it but it's really intense that um um beta never like took jalal to the hospital got him got him stitches but now um farzada is requesting her to call call her an ambulance there's this kind of weird divide this weird blockade that she and uh, Jalal couldn't trespass that she'll easily do for Farzadeh it actually speaks to a weird kind of uh, compassion or connection that they share that is different and perhaps even more intense than the connection that that Bita has with Jalal
damn. Damn, 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 damn. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? A black shirt? That's Jalal. Did you Oh, I see. So when so when Bita called out Jalal Mosin, she wasn't calling out to Mosin, uh, accidentally calling out Jalal's name. Um, she was calling out to Jalal, but uh, ch uh, ch uh, changing it to Mosin so that their son uh, would think that that's his father. Oh my god. Jalal is such a great guy. He's keeping his promise, but fucking Mosin's fucking following them. Mosin, 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 Mosin. I mean, Jalal is overstepping his bounds, I think, but one of these is, is, is wrong for the right reasons, and one of these is right for very, very, very wrong reasons. I was afraid there was going to be a third clone. There's going to be an accident. This was um, foreshadowed earlier with uh, with Mosin saying that there are a all sorts of accidents because people, adults get into fights and children get hurt at, at these stadiums. And so there's going to be a subtraction in their family as well. They're going to be equalized to Jalal and um, Farzadeh's family. You're going to go into full vo villain territory. Don't do this, Mosin. I'm very sympathetic to your understanding of the world, but if you do something serious, then there can be no forgiveness. And the effect, the result is the same for um, Badia. That um, now he has like a distrust or suspicion for his father. That his father doesn't like f fulfill his promises or keep his promises. Mosin, you motherfucker. Just so that you can have sex with your wife as though she loves you again. Oh god, Mosin, Mosin, Mosin. And this is like the opposite version of what Bita did with Farzadeh. That um, Bita ended up saving her, her doppelganger. And uh, Mosin most likely ended up killing his. These doppelgangers can't exist in the world together, so they have to subtract. Ew, 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 ew. This is your wife, you weirdo. Why are you acting like this? Oh! Mosa, you fucked it all up. Tragically, you've gone insane. Dude, Farzane is not gonna ri Yes, she is, because she lost a child. I was gonna say she's not gonna raise Bardia with you. This is a weird dynamic. Uh oh. Impossibly grim. Unimaginably grim. Uh, a, a really good kind of metaphor for, like, a disintegrating marriage, a disintegrating family, though. That um, the two halves that end up surviving this integrative process of the two doppelgangers, the two sets of doppelgangers, is the, um, the parts that are the most incommunicative, the most isolated, the ones that withhold the most, and are the least... Trustful. <laughs> so we get Farzane and we get Mosin, and this is what a marriage turns into in the end. One that is built on artifice, that's built on lies, that makes do with the circumstances that are presented to it. She really is nothing like your wife. You killed your wife for no reason. You killed an innocent man for no reason. Most 
چون واقعیتش بردیان خب خیلی به مادرش وابسته بود شما هم میدونم چقدر عاشق بچه این This motherfucker حالا شاید درست هم بشه به هر حال تو این وضعیت من یه همچین خواهشی از اتون بکنم ولی خب جنازه رو نمیشه خیلی توی سرزون delusional. نگه داشت Absolutely delusional سلام راستش نمیخواستم بیام ولی دیگه تاقا نیوردم I think their marriage is actually really well um, articulated in this uh, high-rise too, that they're trapped in it forever. That Farzane, uh, pretending to be Bita, uh, can no longer speak to her father-in-law. She uh, she loses all connection to her old life. So it's just her, Mosin, and Bardia living in this in this embryonic state. And she actually like acts like a Farzane inhabiting Bardia. It's a really great performance. He said himself there are bigger things and we can't we can't question it. That's no longer your daughter in law. That is a stranger. It's a. It's also a good parallel of the first encounter that Farzane had with Mosin. That she thought she recognized somebody, but she saw a stranger, and now that's what her father-in-law is seeing in her. Absolutely twisted. Oh dear! Don't get. Maybe. Ooh. Lots of ways this could end. It could end in an accident. It could end with them meeting up. He knew. He knew the man that could keep his promise. <sighs> and you end up with a child that is alienated from her, its parents, from his parents. That is what this marriage is. This desire to keep this tight knit family ends up with with a husband and wife who are alienated from each other and from a, with a child that doesn't trust either of them anymore, that doesn't know them. An actual perfect triangle of strangers. Cool. Absolutely superb performances from uh, Tarane Aledusti and Navid Mohammed Zadeh. Uh, yeah, uh, playing two different characters uh, that are doppelgangers of each other. These performances, these par- performances were uh, were captivatingly subtle. Uh, just small, small differences um, in displays of class, in displays of disposition, in displays of of very similar yet just slightly different um uh dysfunctional marriages or relationships uh oh my gosh yeah i think um in my mind like uh metaphorically the movie is a really great construct um in a sliding doors kind of scenario but where sliding doors ends up it ends up like none, none of the relationships really end up working out well but um a, a scenario that that presents like uh paths for a, a marriage to take a relationship to take, a marriage to take, and um, there are paths that are that have like greater communication and um, greater allowance and greater. Um, I don't want to say sacrifice necessarily, necessarily, but a uh, um, greater effort, greater compromise put in by both parties for their partner's behalf and that's kind of uh fully exhibited uh that's like finally exhibited in the um <clears throat> the, the the beta and jalal uh archetype and that re- that archetype is burned up and dissolved by the um ultimate consolidation integration of this subtraction of this unit into the farzane and 
and uh, Mosin and 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 Bardia construct, where it ends up alienating all three in this. The um, the 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 father the the husband is with a wife that he doesn't know and doesn't love but is able to create the artifice the um, appearance of the wife that he knew once knew and loved the wife um is with a person that is not her husband that is totally a stranger to her that she is alienated from but he represents something that she knew in the past and she has a child that she can love um but it's not her child and the child uh has parents that um that are from his like his former life but the father is no longer to be trusted he's a man who keeps secrets he's a man who lies he's a man who doesn't keep promises unlike the man who <laughs> he met like once or twice who kept a promise for him uh who cared about him and um he has a mother who loves him, who cares for him, but is not his mother. And so he's alienated from those two. And that's like, um, like a perfect, uh, metaphor for uh, a family that just tries to stay together for the mechanical reasons, for the right reasons, uh, um, uh, a husband and wife who stay, stay together for the child. Um, and everybody hates each other. Everybody does, or more, more to the point, everybody, everybody has been made a stranger to each other. I think this is really, really deep, dark, um, utilization of the doppelganger or the clone kind of archetype. I'm glad they didn't go for swaps in the, I, I said previously, I'm glad they didn't go for swaps in the kind of like perfunctory way, but, um, utilize just the existence of doppelgangers as um a means to like question the validity of their own lives and their own choices um well i do well i question uh well i, I question Mosin's decision decisions definitely um I, I i do in some ways i do question uh Farzanay's, but i understand where she's come i understand well i don't necessarily understand Farzanay's like total alienation to the point of wanting to like kill herself um I do understand that she's at the at an emotional brink that she is exhausted, she is anxious, she doesn't know if she can be a good mother and seeing the existence just the existence, existence of Beta and her wealthy family and her um well-nurtured and loved child it makes her seem like an incapable parent in its relief and its shadow and so she despairs over that revelation and similarly Mamu, um mosin despairs over the revelation that there is a um a version of him that isn't trapped in his job that isn't trapped by his anger and is capable of being free and caring and nurturing in a way that he can't be he he doesn't know how to um, exhibit care anymore. Just a hint of it with the, the scene of his, um, his son discovering him crying. Um, but even then, he wouldn't open up to his son. He's incapable of it. Fascinating film. Really, really good. Uh, a good string of like dark films that from Iran. I um I do kind of like understand like a cultural, an international kind of bias towards like the really heavy movies the dark movies coming out of iran but that's no slight against the ones that are, that that have uh, reached the international market they're good i would love to see um the ones that haven't made the haven't made the trip but that's a story for another day yeah that was subtraction let me know what you think and uh once again if you're interested in i, I hope there's a u.s release of this in some way in some capacity soon but if not you can purchase this from france it's readily available on uh amazon.fr um i don't know if it's on ebay but you can get it there if you're really adventurous you could try out some uh french blu-ray media websites uh you can figure that out on your own i'm not going to give you those for free let me know what you think of sub subtraction and in the meantime don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old obscure and art house films and until next time Keep watching good movies.